rolling. You're All right, Nigel, friend. you want to know about some of the songs you wrote, or some of the songs that Sean wrote? How how's it feel being there, like the second to the guy? You know, Sean wrote the songs and you had to sing them. You're not getting none of your creativity out there, but you're putting yourself out there to well, people uh, to view. What are your views on that? Actually, I just wrote a song that we're planning to play on the third, and uh, that's me getting to express myself. Mostly, it's Sean. Uh, writing the songs because he had those songs already and we just got some quick songs to, but now we're working on some new stuff it's heavier it's, uh, it's kind of uh, yeah pretty good good shit good shit can you tell us about the hollow scene uh, event coming up soon on 31st of October 31st of October Halloween night it's a costume party show with some great fucking bands can you listen and to those bands that are playing there so that our fans know at home uh, normal like you with Sam Solid film stars. The great expression. Tragedy Andy, Tragedy, Tragedy Andy. Andy. Good shit. And he, he probably know better than I do. I, I, I think I think it's all of them. Can, can, can you tell us some of the bands that influenced you? And and when you go on stage, what bands do you like kinda take your moves from? You know, steal your moves from on stage. Um, if you know what I mean. The, the band that influenced the most I think is in sync. Definitely. Oh because, shit. Uh, yeah. I'm really into the boy band. Yeah, you got nice you guys lines and moving our arms. Yeah, so. dude, you guys got that going on. Yeah. You can see everybody doing it at like one time if you pay attention, you know, to everybody. Yeah. Even you your drummer, dude. Real, real closely. Right. Instead of hitting the sticks, you just we don't know it. We, we actually play by recording. Oh shit. We actually play, uh, lip -sync. Oh shit, they lip sync. What? We don't like that. We don't like that very much. You don't right? like that? What's no. Wrong, what's wrong with I mean, I mean, it's like, it's like you're not, I mean, you, you're fucking lip sync? That's fucking bullshit, Nigel. Seriously, or should I call you Jack? His real name is Jack. People out at home, uh, you Jack. It out. You it uh, out. Another question I wanted to know is: This Halloween show is gonna be pretty big. Yes. And there's gonna be mosh. There's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of mosh pitting at the show. Hearing you guys set. So, um, are you gonna are you gonna be more excited at the show because you guys you're getting more feedback from the crowd, and are you gonna be uh, like energetic towards them? Are you gonna be feeding off them? Oh yeah, Sean. Sean has just joined. Sean has just joined the interview. Oh my God. On the Manic Juggalo show. The great Hi, mom. All right, Sean. Hi, we're, we're just talking about the uh, Holocene show. Oh yeah, Holocene. And, and, and we wanted to know how how it's gonna feel playing in front of a lot of people. Dude, it, have, you, have you? I mean, well, like our CD release that we have a lot of people. I think yeah. it's gonna even and, uh, double. So. It's it's excellent when we have lots of people. Also, when they all take their clothes off and rub uh, liquid soap all over their bodies. Yeah. Because so it's just a yeah. different experience than when you're up there and everyone's fully clothed. Oh yeah, totally, dude. So oh, there you go, that one. Hollow scene, everyone will remove their costumes. Yeah. Hollow scene at night, the rock horrors, man. Exactly. I hear, I hear. Me and Sean got a lot of things planned for that show. Yeah. We're gonna make, yeah. we're gonna make punk rock scene history that show. Yeah. Mark my fucking words, you guys. Um, any uh, what bands influenced you? Oh well, uh, well AFI, Happy. definitely a big one. <laughs> um, it was big influence uh, like the. Three bands, uh, five bands, okay, all that really influenced me. The Beatles? The Beatles are well, the shit. Okay, the Beatles are cool. I'm talking about like more like new school bands like AFI, Rancid, um, the Ataris, um, Operation Ivy, and Minor Thread. All right, we got a, we got a question for you guys. Oh, Finch, Finch, yeah, Finch, Finch, yeah, right. We got a question for you guys. Um, recently, uh, AFI got uh, nominated, or not, or won an yeah. uh, MTV award, right? Yeah, oh my god. But Outkast was presenting the award, and when they did, they said AFI, and they were like, what, who the fuck are they? With the oh. emotions on their face. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Well, I was just really happy that AFI won. I know I voted for them, like, literally, like, 500 times, like, throughout that voting process. But, you know what? It's like, it's just like, you know, it's just reminding me kind of when uh, Avril Lavigne uh, was doing the nominations for her Grammy Awards, and she said David Bowie. Bowie? David yeah. Bowie, right? Yeah, she meant David Bowie, but she said David Bowie. Oh, so it's like, that's why, uh, funny you mentioned that, because I have a scope. Just sitting at right outside that guy's house, and as soon as he walks up, bam, I'm gonna take him oh, out. Oh, good yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm, shit. That. I, I'm, right. I'm a big fan of Outcast, but, um, yeah, you know, it's just like, 
just because you don't know who they are and stuff, you shouldn't like act like that. So yeah. you know, but but I was just really so happy that they won. Assassinated. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But I was just really happy that AFI won. I'm Good big props. So. Next question is, how has this band affected your life since you started? Oh, the Great Expression. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like crazy. Like we become like local celebrities. I'm so flattered by all of the fans, especially all the girls, the ladies. That, like, oh, you like the women, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I love all you ladies out there. Thank you so much for I like all the. I think it would be music if there weren't women, yeah. because all songs are about love and shit. All right, all right. Hey, let's get to the dirt. Yeah. Nigel, who of you? Fuck. Since you've been in the Great Depression. <laughs> Are you checking over? She was bent over like this, right? Oh, shit. Grabbing her yeah. knees. Yeah, hey, you get this dude. Grabbing her knees, right? Shit's so weird. Like, it wasn't a lie. What'd you do? What'd you do? She was, uh, you put your hands on your hands like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Woo! She takes your hands off. And you just go and do it. He's like, his leg is on the ground. If you rock like this, you're going to get back. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the hips, the hips back a lot, or uh, the hips back a lot, or 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 the hips all right. I want to know, if, is there any creative difference, differences in your band? Oh, no. no, no. Are you guys all on the same page? Pretty much. I mean, like, even if after practice, we uh, do get out. Oh, wait, wait. There's rumors that you guys don't even practice, that you guys just sit there and play fucking video games all day. Is that true? Uh, I resent that statement. Because, just because, just because I suck at Grand Theft Auto doesn't mean that we don't practice. Actually, to be honest, since uh, Jeff's PlayStation broke, uh, we we practice, we play again, we practice. So we actually got better since the PlayStation broke. <laughs> good shit, good shit. No, but uh, seriously, you know, we really uh, we practice at least twice a week, and we we got a new song down. We have to use knowledge with this guy wrote. And like you, like you said, there's no creative difference in what's all. We love each other, and like and like even though like I've written like most of the songs so far, like we're getting, this guy writes some beautiful lyrics, and we're gonna use some. Songs, I'm actually, we're writing some uh, melodic stuff. Yeah. Oh shit. Just kind of get some uh, little uh, hardcore melodic. Hardcore melodic. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, you'll love the new song, Mass Produce Knowledge. It's like about how it's much. It's really uh, intense and heavy. And it's about the conformity of school and how much you know school sucks and we gotta change. Okay. So. But I mean, school is cool if they, we just need to change. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff about it. Eventually, uh, record a full length, which we'll do like by ourselves again. Definitely uh, looking to just like play a lot of shows. Um, I don't know, like right now, like whatever happens, like you. Know, I think uh, yeah, the Asian Records is thinking of putting us on their North Cal compilation for 2004. So that'll be great. And uh, play a lot of shows like where everybody's low cal and you know, we're probably gonna be on the future L3 in the future. Oh shit! And, uh, that should be great. Tea said that we were going to be playing Warp Tour. What? Tea leaves. Look for that. Great expression on the Warp Tour, really? you guys. Yeah, I, I was drinking tea and then you oh. got the tea. And oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You oh, yeah. That, that, that shit tells the future, though. Yeah. That shit does tell the future. Yeah, we yeah, we know. Yeah. 2089. Yeah. Good shit. Who knows? By, by next time, we probably might have to do like a California tour, just play like down in SoCal and stuff. Women like you are going to serve will help us out. Yeah. Good shit. Well, um, I know you're too young to vote, but but you are. Oh yeah, yeah. A hundred some odd candidates. Anybody can win this election. And it's fun. and what do you think about it? Well, I think um, it's funny how like they always want they want to be called Gray Davis, but yet we have like Larry Flynn, a porn like uh, magazine, like like you know Poncho, and then like we got porn star running, we got Collins Center running, we got Gary Coleman, we got. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, all the you know, all the good glam fuckers. But anyway, but um, I just think it's funny that they say he talks so much shit about Gray Davis, but yet they didn't have anyone with a thousand dollars or how much money and then a thousand signatures can run. So it's like hell, like well, as popular as we're getting, like any of us in the Great Expression could run. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but but then we wouldn't have time for the band, so screw that. <laughs> all right, all right, we're gonna. Close the interview now because we're running out of tape. We yeah. can just think of some Daniel here. Mm -hmm. And so, well, is there anything?
anything you want to say to your fans out there about, about the, the show so far? Well, definitely um, thank you guys all for coming to our show, supporting us, buying our CD, the Oxymoron IP. Um, just keep coming to our show, supporting us, you know, singing along. We love all you guys. We're here to make music for you guys. And um, that's what we're all about. We're here to help out everyone in the Bay Area, like all our friends, our fans, the uh, fellow bands and stuff. Just make the scene fresh and everything.